Welcome back, everybody. Um, it's my great pleasure uh, to be able to introduce as our next speaker, Professor Maurizio Forte, you know, Professor of Social Sciences, Humanities, and Arts at UC Merced, a longtime Citrus investigator and collaborator on a number of projects. And his topic today is Teleimmersive Heritage. So please join me in welcoming Maurizio Forte. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm an archaeologist, so my, my perspective will be a bit different uh, um, in terms of uh, um, use of uh, visualization technologies. Uh, today, I would like to, um, to discuss about a collaborative perspective in um, interpretation, communication, and transmission of cultural heritage, and more specifically in archaeology, because it's my field. First of all, I like to uh, shortly to give this overview about um, data collection. So I like to, um, I have this vision, so where we, uh, we split the, in this case, the digital memory, what we collect uh, in the documentation process, and the performance. So today we'll much more focus on the performance. Performance to me is uh, uh, 3D modeling, simulation, interaction, embodiment, in action. So what we can do uh, through uh, interaction and um, in uh, and much more focus uh, in a collaborative system. It's very important that we we discuss uh, um, this is what I call the cybernetic circle. How uh, uh, we process data in uh, in our field, how they circulate. So we can start uh, typically from here, and then we have a. I'm very field work guy, so I spend more all my time in the summer in the field, but any kind of data entry will be processed, interpreted, then validated. So the validation process is what is the core of our, of our work. We don't think we really reconstruct, but we define different scenarios that we interpret later, and we, uh, we do this by uh, uh, interaction, and through the feedback, we try to uh, reformulate theories, and possibly we can figure out uh, how to transmit information to the future. Then we continue to elaborate uh, information and data through uh, virtual communities. And this haps, uh, happens in, can, or can happen uh, in an immersive system or on the web, or like I want to say, I want to present today, in a collaborative system, in a truly immersive system. So um, even if the topic is visualization, I would like to point out the importance uh, of uh, um, the simulation process in my field. Um, if the past, this was my first book in the 90s, was virtual archaeology, so the way to reconstruct the past. So now we, I like to say we are in a cyber era where um, we do um, uh, perform in a collaborative way through simulation processes, uh, collaborative environment. So we force in 3D um, a, uh, an interaction, uh, in a, and we create different dynamics of interaction. I think this is very important in the sense that simulation can finalize different uh, 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 di possible discoveries and possible interpretation. That's why we like to, um, to say that we simulate the past and we do not reconstruct the past. A um, few slides about data recording. Now, archaeologists and uh, cultural heritage management in the, or, or in the world collect data in a different way by differential GPS, by ladder, by remote sensing imagery. Uh, we, we are in Peru. Here we are in Chavin and Guantar World Heritage Site. Uh, we collaborated with UNESCO also in the collection data. You see here there's an uh, yeah, interesting combination of uh, traditional, uh, very traditional local transportation uh, tools with uh, high tech uh, in, um, uh, in the, um, on the top of it. So we see user laser scanner. So we, uh, the difference uh, um, in, um, uh, in relation with the past decades is very impressive. We produce uh, terabytes of data every summer. And, uh, and this information sometimes uh, is processed in almost in real time. So uh, and what we do in different archaeological um, activities uh, because of the technology in action is completely different uh, from uh, 
from uh, the past methodologies. And so we need to face uh, this kind of uh, um, uh, new trend in, uh, in uh, digital data processing. For example, a new generation laser scanners are able to uh, collect even uh, um, one million point per second. So it means that the, for the, the information that we get from a monument, like in this case an Inca palace, is, uh, um, is complex to be, uh, to be interpreted, very complex. Uh, we have organized here at, at Citrus uh, recently an exhibit on uh, West Han Tomb uh, in China. So China is uh, now is very demanding for um, uh, the use of mul the multidisciplinary use of uh, digital technology in archaeology because uh, of the impact of the um, urban uh, of the new urbanization plans. So, for example, in Xi'an is a city of uh, 12 million of inhabitants. So they 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 dig uh, 300 tombs uh, every semester. So this is uh, is as uh, a huge impact uh, in the, uh, in the development process of the territory, but also in finding a good compromise between protection, safeguarding, and uh, cultural, digital cultural interpretation. Um, slide, I think, hopefully uh, helpful to understand the complexity of the data we record. Um, uh, if you have a, some of you, maybe, or in the media, you can find a very romantic idea of uh, archaeology in the, in the field, well, you see that here that we use uh, uh, so many different technologies, and that's why we need to integrate uh, data in systems. We do process uh, aerial photos. We do um, uh, make geophysical prospection. So we use uh, historical data, historical documents, uh, LiDAR, remote sensing, and uh, 3D modeling, scanning, uh, digital aerial photos, and so on. So all, th all of this is... Uh, all this, all this process can integrate bottom-up uh, approaches. So what we do, for example, in the excavation process and top-down. So what we interpret, collecting, comparing models. Um, uh, this is the case of Copan in Honduras. So a new um, project we have uh, with uh, uh, the German Institute of Archaeology and uh, University of New Mexico, University of California, Merced, and other European institutions. So here, for example, uh, in, a, in a two days, we have collected as you see here, photo, uh, digital photogrammetry data, uh, 3D modeling, laser scanning, and, uh, and many others. So that this kind of integration into the space, because um, we are in the very spatial domain, uh, it's not easy, but it's important for the interpretation and also for um, the validation of data in transparency. The, uh, the site is not in the middle of nowhere, should be contextualized in the landscape, in the environment. So we collect the paleoenvironmental data and we try to simulate uh, all this process in, uh, um, in, a, in the cybernetic cycle, following the cybernetic cycle I presented before. Again, so the past cannot be reconstructed. So what we like to say is that uh, we try to potentially uh, simulate the past so that you see here um, rendering from uh, made by my student from the Bill of Livia in Rome and uh, every single uh, simulation action is focused on uh, a possible reconstruction not the final one because this is the core not the final one but try to simulate even the digging uh, digging you know is very destructive activity what what is gone is gone so that uh, one of the issues is how to make reversible or at least to mitigate the impact of archaeological excavation. And then we have started a new project in Chataluyuk in Turkey, here. Um, uh, the Neolithic site of Chataluyuk is one of the most important Neolithic sites in the world. It's thanks to the collaboration with Stanford University and um, six other universities uh, um, in the world. So we started to dig and to, to use different uh, um, methodology for uh, the three-dimensional recording. So laser scanners, optical scanner, time of flight scanner, time of phase, uh, photogrammetry, computer vision. So the idea was <clears throat> to introduce the 3D technology during the excavation process, layer by layer, artifact by artifact, and so on, in order to create uh, an, uh, a 3D database of uh, um, all the data in the, um, 
uh, during the excavation. So the, uh, all this process was able to uh, produce, uh, as you see here, um, a hy hybrid models of uh, um, current and past excavation. So we have integrated 3D databases and, uh, for example, here in the analytic house. Um, so, and we finally, we have shared all this information in the collaborative system. Um, I will present shortly. Very important, so the 3D connection comes through the simulation because the model is hybrid. You don't see, you, you can't see this in the excavation process because it's impossible. You cannot go through the layers. You don't understand the 3D connection. So you are lost in many cases because you don't know how is the relation, what kind of relation the, the layers have in the, in the, in the space. Um, I don't know why the movies didn't work. Um, so let's see if I can. Let me see if I can. Oh, it doesn't work. Sorry for that. Because we have changed the setup and I <laughs> check it out. Okay, no problem. So we go to the simulation. Um, Um, uh, the, um, uh, here in Berkeley, we, we have set up uh, a, a one of the uh, two collaborative system, um, uh, telemetry system we have uh, um, in, um, uh, thanks to a Citrix grant, uh, we have uh, um, made, this is the telemetry system, it's uh, uh, very close to to uh, our conference room. It's based on um, um, uh, stereo cameras uh, working in real time and able to connect uh, different uh, um, labs around uh, um, campuses. So the, the idea is uh, to use um, um, the system as a, a way to reinterpret the data, to contextualize the data, to reformulate interpretation, to force the simulation process, and first of all, to create uh, through the performance, uh, a new perspective in the analysis of data. Um, the system uh, works with real-time 3D reconstruction, so you can see um, uh, the avatar in, um, in first person or in third person. It's based on client, uh, of course, it's a client server system uh, working also in remote, so you can have a version of it uh, in, uh, even in a personal computer on the web. But it's very important for us is the embodiment, so the way uh, the avatar and the human avatar can be processed and uh, can be visualized in, uh, in the system. Um, not sure if uh, this video works. I know for some reason I can visualize any video. Uh, sorry for that. Um, we, uh, we have this facility is at uh, UC Merced, it's the power wall, it's an immersive, uh, semi-immersive system with um, uh, 16 um, 3D projector. And uh, this, for example, is the case of uh, the Chinese tomb I mentioned before. So there are different users, um, in this case in the represented by avatar, they play into the 3D space, moving the funeral object and try to, um, to figure out how the, the, uh, the object were position into the space. But of course, there are so many other actions we do in the cyberspace. We measure, we scale, we, uh, we change, uh, uh, we analyze the geometry, we analyze uh, uh, models, we, uh, we share uh, 3D graphic libraries, we upload and download. This is the case, the, uh, 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 the temple 22 of the minor city of Copan, where you see here you find uh, different users at work. This is uh, my interaction in the, at Berkeley. Uh, right now, we can communicate easily with UC Davis, um, uh, uh, UC Berkeley, 
and the Merced. So we share the same data, so different student, different scholar um, can perform in real time with a motion uh, capture system able to recognize the position of the, um, of the interactor into the space. For example, for the Mayan temple of uh, Copan, this is the case, we um, use the, the, uh, the temple, the architectural reconstruction as a 3D puzzle. So any single um, uh, human avatar can assemble, reassemble, or can uh, interpret differently, can simulate differently uh, the reconstruction. And this uh, is uh, absolutely important because uh, we don't know at the beginning what is the final one. So we don't know what will be the final temple. That's why the interaction, the feedback we get through uh, the collaborative environment, having more uh, people at work in the same 3D space can help a lot and can change completely the interpretation process and the capacity to reformulate in simulation and interpretation. In conclusion, uh, I do, um, uh, I think, insist in the importance of the simulation, not just a visualization tool, but as a way to interact and to perform in a 3D cyberspace. So that in, in, in the domain of totally immersive system, the domain of collaborative system knowledge comes through the interaction. Knowledge is distributed, augmented by collaborative environments, so we play with the data, and the data can create uh, additional knowledge, and this additional knowledge can again reformulate it, and so on. So it's an endless process. Um, and finally, is uh, telemersive technologies allows to create hybrid, uh, hybrid cyberspaces of simulation, and not just reconstruction. I like the idea to have network of minds at work. Uh, able to create new knowledge, because otherwise, as the first speaker said, the simulation, the 3D visualization can be just a tool and not a way to make discoveries. Thank you. We have time for a couple of questions for Professor Forte. Yes, ma'am. Um, yeah, hold up one second. Thank you. Um, I have a question about the directionality of the telemersive experience from the point of the, the user. Um, at this point in time, if you are, if you are um, telemersively within the 3D space, can you experience the, the height and scale of a tomb, for example, or of a castle? Um, yes, but it depends. Yes, of course, but it depends on the capacity of your system. So, for example, um, uh, in the case of Berkeley, so that if you, uh, you there's a frame with different stereo cameras, so and then so you have a quite big um, space. It depends on the space. So if you have this kind of one-to-one -one scale experience, for example, in the case of the tomb, it was really possible to reproject the tomb uh, uh, on one-to-one -one scale. Sometimes not possible, of course, because uh, you cannot project in this. But there is a, a sort of indirect embodiment. So the, the, what I think is the direct embodiment is what you see from your first person. Then is what you can see from your third person, what your avatar is doing into the space. And this can be completely on scale. Because you can walk through a, a Copan, uh, uh, Mayan city, or you can, for example, do other action on, perfectly on scale using your third person avatar. Or you can even avoid, uh, because this is another question, is why I need an avatar? If it, for some reason it's not so important that to, the avatar is important for keeping a natural interface into the collaborative system. So you can have a very collaborative, uh, sorry, very natural uh, behavior as in the reality. You can avoid that and you can play without any, any avatar, just interacting with data in real time. Great, and one last question here. Can you share with us an example, a concrete example, where you say this was something we did in 3D, collaborative environment, that would have never happened in 2D an environment, like a web conferencing with a side screen, with a 2D collaboration, I place this item here, or I put this here? Yeah, thank you for the question. So, uh, there, well, there are many examples. The, the first one is the excavation. So the excavation is something uh, I, for I can simulate in 3D. I can see in 3D in the reality. I can, in any case, re-simulate in, in, even if I'm on site. Because 
I don't see the relation between layers. I don't see the relation between object. I don't see uh, the components. I see them isolated, but not recontextualized into the space. So that when we, in short, we work in 2D creating maps. And this is uh, the mental map we create uh, through the fieldwork. We browse layers in 2D map. So the 3D experience is just in the simulation process because in that way you see connection you cannot see, for example, in the reality or in 2D. Or you cannot play with them in any way because you don't have the capacity, uh, physically, physical capacity, and also in the, uh, you can recreate also in the, the 3D coordinates. So this kind of, uh, and also the, last but not least, the accuracy. So a scanner, for example, can multiply 10, 20, 30 times the capacity of our naked eyes to, to understand an object, for example. And this is possible in the, in the, in the simulation. Optical scanner can generate a model in a micron accuracy. Uh, but same for a building. You have a one millimeter or, or less than one millimeter in one analytic house. So that is another way to, to analyze, for example, features that you can see in the reality but in collaborative way. So this, uh, I think, is the important, very important thing because different scholars at work can create something maybe alone you can create. So it's a sort of hybrid way to, to interpret the reality. True. Thank you so much, Maurice. Thank you.